And I didn't silence my phone, so I'm going to do that now before we go any further. I, I worry about uh, those amber alerts that come through or something like that that might, uh, might get past, uh, even if you set your phone on silent, that might come through. What, what are you fear, fearful of? Think for a moment. What is it that when you start to fear or think about fear, contemplate fear, what is it that you're fearful of? Fire? Was that what you said? Oh, spiders. <laughs> you need to pray for my hearing, okay? <laughs> yeah, spiders and all those, all those nasty things. Margaret and I were, were out in the yard the other day, and, and lo and behold, there's a, there's a snake right there. I started to pick up some trash, you know, and whoa, what's that one? We did some research. Fortunately, it was a non-poisonous and everything, but still, anytime you see a snake, uh, it was a little, a little what, was it, what was it called? I can't rat snake. It was a rat snake. There you go. A red. Uh, well, uh, yeah, until we looked it up. Yeah, so I was going to say, no snake is a good snake until you find out whether it is a good snake. or not. Anyhow, <laughs> so they said they're good for killing rodents, getting rodents. I said, okay, wonderful. You know, this, this song that we just sent, sang, Because He Lives. We sang that this morning at the early service, at sunrise service. I can say that last, that last verse, then one day I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then, as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory and I'll, and I'll know He reigns. I hope we know He reigns, but I hope that we know in other ways, in experiential uh, uh, items as well, that He reigns. And, uh, you know, that, that makes me wonder about people that we might know who don't know about why, why Jesus have you ever encountered anybody that you might say, Happy Resurrection Day, and they say, So what? I haven't met them, but I know they exist out there. Anybody can look at the culture in which we live and know that there are people that do not believe in Jesus. They don't. And what is their end if they haven't given their life to Christ and work to amend their life, as we are always doing. Each and every day we work on that, work to amend their life to be in line with the teachings of Christ and the teachings of the Bible. What is their end? It's not pretty. It's not pretty. I want to share with you a, few, a couple of stories. I think they're related. These, these are bit, stories have been around a while. Uh, maybe you've heard them. I don't know. But... Uh, but there, I found him quite interesting. Um, does the name Larry Walters ring a bell with anybody? Does the armchair balloon man ring a bell with anybody? Oh, some of you have heard it. Some of you have heard it, yeah. Um, Larry was a truck driver, and he had a lifelong dream to fly. He joined the Air Force with the hopes that he would learn to fly, but... Uh, his eyesight wasn't so good. It wasn't good enough. And so uh, he did, did, did his, you know, service in the Air Force, he even went to Vietnam, things like that. But, but he, he really started at age 13 to have this passion to fly. And, and so even when he came back from Vietnam, it, 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 just, it just kept growing in him. And fi finally, there was one day he was in an Army-Navy store, and he saw... A, uh, a, a big helium, a, a tank of helium gas, and he saw also some packages of these, these eight-foot weather balloons, big weather balloons, and he had an idea. This is a true story. You can look it up on the internet. I mean, everything on the internet is right. It's true, right? Okay, okay, okay. But the, it's a true story. He took his patio chair, little chair. I wouldn't be surprised if some of us have the identical cha chair that, that in, in our patio that he had. And he worked with his girlfriend, and he hooked up these, what was it, 45 of these weather balloons and anchored the chair to the, to the ground. Or maybe it was to his Jeep. Uh, but at any rate, his idea was he's going to fill up these balloons with helium and float up into the sky and, and he took a little BB gun with him. I understand it was a pistol. 
And his plan was to start when he wanted to come down. He was going to shoot the, start shooting the, the balloons so that he would start to come down. He had gallon jugs of water uh, strapped to the chair as well for, for ballast. Well, the time came for him. He got in this chair, and uh, when one of the anchor lines was cut, the second one all of a sudden snapped and broke. And instead of just kind of floating up a few hundred feet, he shot up like a cannon. <laughs> shot up like a cannon. He cut, he, there's even a video online of him allegedly speaking to his girlfriend through a CB radio. It's kind of hard to understand regardless, but anyway, he shot up. Things didn't go the way it planned. A TWA pilot at 11,000 feet radioed into Los Angeles Tower. I just saw a guy in a lawn chair. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, okay, what have you been eating or drinking or smoking? Okay. But then follow that a little bit later, a Delta pilot radar did said, I saw it too. 11,000 feet. He continued to ascend. He got over three miles high. He went up to 16,000 feet before things started to, you know, get a little bit better. I think by then he started to shoot out some of those balloons and then after a, a few of them, uh, I guess enough of them, he dropped his gun, his BB gun. But it was enough to get him back down. Was, and he did come back down. And then he got caught in some power lines. <laughs> Finally, you know, he, 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 he finished his descent back to earth. And he was suspended only a, a, a few feet from, from the ground. And he, he hopped out and... That was the end of that particular their story. But, but when he was interviewed afterwards, one of the reporters asked him, Larry, why did you do it? And his answer was, a man can't just sit around. A man can't just sit around. I understand somebody else, there's been a number of copycats, uh, but, but anyway, that was, he, he was the one that started it. His, his, his comment, a man can't just sit around, I think it has a message for us. I think it has a message for the church. I'm talking to church worldwide. I think the church has too long been sitting around. Been sitting around. And if we believe that Christ rose from the dead, we can't be sitting around any longer. We need to come out of our comfort zones and go make a change in people's lives. We need to love them the way Jesus loved them. I've got another story to tell you. This one's, this one's also a true story. It's from back in 1921, Lewis Laws became the warden at Sing Sing Prison. Anybody ever hear of Sing Sing Prison? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of us have. Yeah, maybe all of us. It was, had a notorious reputation for being one of the worst prisons in all of America. It's about 30 miles up the Hudson River from New York City. You know the phrase, don't get sent up the river? It's based on that don't get sent to Sing Sing. That's what it, that's what it meant. Do anything you can to avoid that because you'll be in trouble if you end up there. Well, again, in 1921, Lewis Laws became the warden, and everybody knew about how bad it was. But, and, and his wife, Catherine, was told, don't ever go in to that prison. You take your life in your hands. Catherine didn't pay any attention to those things. When the, the prison had a basketball game with the inmates, she marched into that, that uh, basketball arena w with her three children in tow, and she sat right amongst the, the prisoners themselves. And she said, she said, I owe it all to my... Well, he, well this was actually uh, the, the, the comment that Lewis said uh, when he retired some uh, 20 years later, when and Sing Sing had been transformed into a model, a model of uh, goodness in prisons. 
And he was, he was given credit for it, but he said, I owe it all to my wonderful wife, wife Catherine, who was buried outside the prison walls. See, what she did is, as I said, she just went in, she went in to get to know these men. These are men created in the image of God. And some people said that she embodied Christ's presence to them. She went to, uh, she, she tried to understand, to hear, to learn their stories about their sentence and what they were in for. Uh, I know Chris has served on um, uh, Kairos weekends. I've served on one or two. And I, I don't know about what Chris was told, but I was told never ask the inmates what they're in for, what they did. Never do that. If they tell you, that's fine, but you never ask them. She would write, go right up to them and say, well, what are you here for? Anyway, she went to one particular fellow that she heard was blind. She went to visit him, and she held his hand, and she said, do you know Braille? He said, what's that? She taught him Braille. She worked with him. However long it took him, she worked with him. She knew, uh, found another uh, inmate that was uh, a deaf mute. She went to visit him. She asked as best as she could about sign language. He didn't know sign language. She didn't know sign language. She went and learned sign language just so that she could come back and teach him. Like I said, Lewis Laws was warden of this place for 20 years. The place was transformed by Catherine's ministry there. And one day in 1937, after about 16, maybe better part of 17 years, Catherine was killed in a car wreck. The next day, after the car wreck, the warden did not come in to the prison, and the inmates said something's wrong. The, yes, the assistant warden was, had taken over for the, for the whole day. They said something's wrong. They found out about Catherine's death. And the next day, after that, as the story goes, she was in a casket at home, three quarters of a mile away from the entrance, the main entrance to Sing Sing Prison. And when the uh, assistant warden came in, he, he saw a, a huge group of the inmates standing at the fences near the gate. He looked at him. He said, many of them had tears coming down their eyes, coming down. He looked at him. He said, okay, men, I know what you want to do. Just be home by the end of the day. And with that, he opened the main gate, and he let these prisoners, a long line of prisoners, walk three-quarters of a mile down the road to the house where they stood in line one by one to pay their respects to Catherine. And by the end of the day, every single one of them was back. Seventeen years she worked there. Well, I wouldn't say necessarily she single-handedly transformed it, but very possibly, very possibly, it was due to her work. Can one person make a difference? Can one person change a culture, maybe? Possibly, depending upon what God does. If Jesus is risen from the dead, and if the Holy Spirit lives within us, there's no telling what he may call us to do. Just to love people just to love people. You may ask, well, what do these two stories have to do with Resurrection Sunday? Well, I think they, they have a lot because we can come to Resurrection Sunday, we can be Christians and think that Christ is just here to give us our best life, to just make us a little bit happier, give us a little bit more of what we want. Or we can understand that Christ rose from the dead to make us what He wants to make us what the Father wants, empowered by the Holy Spirit. That leads me to this passage of Paul's letter to the Colossians. Did you hear it? If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. That's where the reading stopped. Thank you, Tom, for doing a great job reading, as you always do. But verse 5 says, so put, on, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. 
Have we put to death what is earthly in us? There's a long list of things. I'll leave that to you to go read it. You study it. You look at it. You ponder it of all the things. Put to death what's earthly. It's getting a new car, getting a second house, third house, the bigger boat, whatever it might be, more money in the bank account, a trip, whatever it might be. Put to death what's earthly and live with the resurrection power so that when we come, not only we come to death's door, we won't be fearful, but we will be able to look back on our lives and say, well, there's somebody that God used me to bring to faith in Christ. Again, not just for a better life. Yeah, there's a, there's a scripture that I remember from many, many years ago. Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. That's a great scripture. Psalm, one of the Psalms, I want to say 34, but delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Do you think he might know what the desires of your heart are better than even you do? Better than I do? I guarantee you that's, it worked that way, that way for me. You know, we might say, is, is Jesus a convenience or is Jesus king in our lives? You know, part of that sermon I heard a little while ago, Pastor Spivey read from a different passage of the, uh, the Gospels about the resurrection. And the passage he read from had the angel asking the women, why are you seeking the living among the dead? And that was kind of his theme, that how we search for the living among so many dead things of the world. We look to serve Christ by serving in different capacities, doing what we think is the right thing instead of just following what it tells us to do here. Jesus is not merely a fable. There's a lot of people out there that think Jesus is just a fable. It's just a story made up to try to get us to, uh, I guess, pull our, ourselves up by our bootstraps and, and not only live a better life, but be a, be a nicer person. That's not where, where it all is. That's that's only a little bit of it. Not that we can pull ourselves up by our bootstraps, but that we just try to be better. And you know, when Paul writes here, you know, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God, and a little bit later, put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. If we, if we don't do those things, then we're, we are. We're seeing Jesus as just something that's uh, convenient not something that is, has eternal ramifications. Let me ask you a question right now. Who do you think of, who do you think might come to mind that needs to know that Jesus is the only way to heaven? The only way. There is no other. And he rose from the dead to prove it. God raised him up. After three days, just as he had predicted, just as Jesus had predicted, just as the Old Testament had predicted, God raised him up to prove it to the world. And so, how do we respond to that? You know, we are, have you ever wondered, that, why didn't God take you home as soon as you believed in Jesus? Why didn't he bring you home? It's because he gave us a job to do. We have a job to do. And that is, well, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Let me jump down a little bit further in this passage, because we won't come back to it in future Sundays. Verse 15 through 17 reads this way, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Listen to this next phrase, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. Do you think the world needs to hear what we can teach them? I think so. I think the world is dying to hear what we can teach them. He goes on, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God and whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God the Father through him. You know, last week on Palm Sunday, 
we read from Paul's letter to the Philippians, and in that, that letter, I made reference to the 21st verse, which reads in the contemporary English version, he says, if I live, it will be for Christ. If I die, I'll gain even more. That's why we don't have to be fearful of anything, because he lives. And again, back to verse 1, if you've been raised, if, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God, verse 2, set your minds. You hear that word minds, plural? It means he's talking to the whole church. He's talking to us. Every single one of us, set your minds. You know, if, we, if, there's, if there's anybody watching online, maybe live this morning, or maybe you'll catch this video later on, if you're not a Christian, I look around here and I think probably everybody here is a Christian, most likely. I bet everybody was a Christian at the sunrise service this morning. But if you're not a Christian, I want you to know that Jesus died for you. And he rose for you. He rose to give you life. He rose to give you life. True life. Resurrection life. Life that enables us to follow, to trust, to obey, and thereby, like the psalmist says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the delights of your heart, the desires of your heart. And if we are a Christian, if we have received Christ as Lord and Savior, well, then we have to make sure that we're following some of this stuff right here. My mind goes right back to verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all, all the wisdom. He loves you. He will get you home safely. And you know what? He loves everyone out there that would speak terribly about him, would curse him to his face if they could, and in a sense, in the fact that Jesus is risen from the dead, whenever they curse him, they are cursing him to their face. He loves them too. Do we love them? Can we love them? Can we love them maybe like Catherine did to those inmates? I don't care what you did. I don't care what you did. I'm here to share God's love with you. He wants us to share that good news. He wants us to share it next door down the street, at work, maybe under our own roof, our own family, even if they're a distance, anybody we can think of, he wants us to do that. Let's heed the warning. Let's be inspired on this Resurrection Sunday that he is alive. He is with you. He is empowering you. He is calling you to a deeper faith, a deeper life, a life that has eternal significance, not just for you, but for any number of people outside of the fellowship of the church. Any number. Do we have eyes? Can we ask God to give us eyes to see and ears to hear that when he, when he points out someone, when he speaks to us, that we'll hear him, we'll hear his voice, and we will share. We read the gospel from Matthew's gospel, the 28th chapter, and you know how that ends. Where Jesus says to his disciples, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore into all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. Remember, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Do you have a mission? Do you have a mission? If you know Jesus as Savior, follow him as Lord, and you have a mission. Let's go glorify Jesus in all that we say, do, and are, even more than we already have. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your providence, your presence, your power. The promise that we have nothing to fear spiders or anything else really we can deal with those things we can deal with snakes we can deal with cockroaches whatever it might be but ultimately we've got nothing to fear because you're with us your resurrection has proved to the world without a shadow of a doubt 
that you live forever, never ever again to die. And yet when we leave this earth, you are preparing a house for us, a home for us, a room for us. And you will usher us there for eternity to be with you. We have nothing to fear. So Father, if we're fearful about anything, especially about sharing about you, Lord Christ, take that away from us. And as we step out in faith, may you be honored, exalted, glorified, and may people see the light in us, be drawn to the Jesus that they see in us, all for your glory and for their eternal well-being. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.